This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. All right, what did we find here? We found us some items. St. Weigelt's Cudgel. It's uh, damaging three. Inflicts persecuting for six seconds on hit. I don't know what the fuck that means. It has plus five accuracy. I'm not impressed. A strictly devoted follower of Wudica, Weigelt was haunted by dreams of criminals committing horrific acts of violence, only to escape punishment or receive one that was unduly light. She came to believe Wudica was speaking to her through these dreams, demanding these people receive justice. Weigelt found these criminals in hideouts and homes, and very often in jail, serving inadequate sentences. She would steal into these places, which were frequently under heavy guard, find her way to the criminal, and pronounce the judgment of Wudica. Here's the deal. I just want to... Let me just digress for a moment before continuing to read this. It's always motherfuckers who have never been incarcerated that think other people's amount of time they have to be incarcerated is not enough. I don't think you understand how enough it is. You don't have to be incarcerated for that long to, to suffer the psychological effects of being incarcerated, to have your life fucking completely destroyed by being incarcerated. Like, it's not, oh, he was only locked up for two years or five years? Only, only a few years? That's not enough. That's not enough of a punishment. That's a fucking enormous punishment. People don't seem to understand what it's actually like to go to prison for years. And so they always think people need to be locked up for longer. But, just saying. I think sentences are too fucking long as it is. Returning to the text. So she was Judge Dread. Sounds like it, Saito. Find her way to the criminal and pronounce the judgment of Wudica. Her incredible knack for reaching these places were in some instances later declared as miracles when she was canonized. If the criminal was lucky, it would only mean disfigurement, but most were executed on the spot with Weigelt's cudgel. Eventually, Weigelt's reputation spread too far, and many criminals that feared her began to set traps and issue bounties. When she was finally caught, she was clubbed to death with her own weapon. Wow. It's pretty brutal. It is said that with her final words, she declared she was a murderer and that she deserved this fate. That seems unlikely. St. Weigelt's cudgel is a simple spiked club with a leather-wrapped handle. The wood itself is irreversibly stained reddish-brown with the blood of criminals. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this weapon. Right into the stash with you. And then there's Gwyn's Band of Union. Grants Blessing once per encounter. Nice little accuracy and damage buff for the team. AoE. That's actually pretty fucking nice. Once per encounter. Grants instilled doubt when endurance drops below 80%. It is an AoE... Days... Sounds like it goes off on its own when your endurance goes goes down. Once we go and plus four in like this ring is bad as a motherfucker. This is a good this is a good ring. I just said the ring is bad and then I said the ring is good in the very next sen sentence. But you know what I mean. 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 Sidus says, "Okay, never mind. She was Kevin Spacey's character from Seven. Oh my God, I love Kevin Spacey so much. He's like the best fucking actor." And he was really good in Seven. So creepy. In that special Kevin Spacey way. Gwyn was a young woman from Forked Vale who was engaged to be married to a farmer from her village. Her parents were thrilled about the match, yet as the day of her wedding drew nearer, Gwyn suffered from horrible nightmares that she was suffocating. She would awaken, gasping for breath, but otherwise unable to move. 
She told her parents about the nightmares and the horrible weight that seemed to press on her shoulders more and more each passing day. They assured her that the nerves would pass, but they didn't. On the morning of her wedding day, when the sky was still gray and a heavy mist hung over the fields, Gwen snuck away. She thought a long walk might calm her, but the further she got from Forked Vale, the better she felt. By the time she reached Pearlwood Bluffs, she realized she had no intention of going back. She spent the night at a little roadside inn on the charity of the owner, and after a hot dinner and a good mug of ale, she enjoyed the best sleep she'd had in months. When she awoke, her hosted po hostess pointed her to Defiance Bay. She reached the city and quickly found the port. She had nothing of value besides her betrothal ring, which she traded for passage to Edder. If this was her fucking ring and she just traded this for a ship passage, this is a badass ring. Somebody's gonna wear this. Alright, so let's take a look at our situation here. Plus four intellect. Could be good on Katie, actually. I don't think she has an intellect bonus. Although it should go on somebody that uses AoE stuff. I mean, I can use it for duration of my status effects, which makes it still good for Katie, but, um... <laughs> Min-maxed as fuck. Constitution and Resolve, four. And that's... That four is with a plus one from an item, so really they're three. And then these other ones are high as shit, 21, 21, 24. So min-maxed. So little fucks given. Okay, hold up. So, in theory, the best person to use that would probably be Kana, because he's Mr. AoE's. I guess Grieving Mother as well. She's already got a plus three intellect helm. He's got... two intellect on his armor. Could be alright for Palagina as well. But no, I think I want to put it on Kana. Plus, he's never got anything useful to do in the beginning of the encounter, so he could use this blessing. So what are his current rings? AoE ring and Suppress Affliction. Well, he never really uses that Suppress Affliction. And she's got one on anyway. So I think... Let's see, right now his intellect is 19. But it's about to go up to 21. Yeah, 21 now. I could change the enchant on his armor now. What does he not have a bonus to? Perception. I think I'll leave it, just in case he stops using this ring. Of course, he's not going to stop using that ring. Oh, I can't just I can't just replace an enchant as already. It's fine, it's fine, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's redundant. It's actually fine. It's actually fine. I wonder which one of these figurines is better. The one that summons spiders, or the one that summons three beetles? I think the beetles are better than these spiders, so stick with that. Brings up a good point. I wonder why Obsidian didn't opt for romance in this game. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I don't know that Obsidian really does romances very often. I mean, there were some pseudo romances in in Alpha Protocol. There were, I mean, there were romances, I guess, although not full fledged romantic relationships like in, like, 
Baldur's Gate 2 or or Mass Effect games or Dragon Age. Alright, let's go. Fallout New Vegas didn't have romance either. I don't think Wasteland 2 does either. Well, Wasteland 2 is not has nothing to do with Obsidian, but Yeah, I don't think it does either. They shall see nothing while I see much. I don't know about like um, Knights of the Old Republic 2? Obsidian did that. I don't think it has romances, but it might. What about, um... They did Neverwinter Nights 2. And that, that has romances. Yeah, there's definitely romance in Neverwinter Nights 2. And Obsidian did that. Although the romances in Neverwinter Nights 2 were kind of bad, actually. Kind of poorly done, to be honest, so... Maybe that's why. They're like, hey, we kind of suck at this. I think all the people that like to do romances and were good at it went to Bioware. And all the people that were wanted to do other stuff went to Obsidian. I liked Neverwinter Nights 2. I was such a huge fan of Neverwinter Nights 1 that I just really liked Neverwinter Nights 2 just because of how much I was a Neverwinter Nights fan. I've only played part of it, but apparently Mask of the Betrayer is supposed to be like this amazing expansion that's... People compare it to Planescape Torment, which of course is saying a lot as far as I'm concerned. Where the hell are these other gift bringers? If I was an other gift bringer, where would I be? I really need to play that. I really need to play... Mask of the Betrayer. That's on my list, but... It's pretty far down the list compared to a lot of other games, so... You know, if I ever do play it, it'll be a long time from now. Alright, I think we've really explored this level, and I think there's no more gift bringers, or gift bearers, or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, to talk to on this floor. So I think it's time to go down to the Hall of Silence. This place is fucking crawling with assholes, though. Actually, the thing is, they're not assholes. These are, these are just devoted monks of Andra. Like, there's really no reason to kill these people. They're not evil. They're not, they're not doing anything wrong. Oh, wait, that's not true. They're trying to herald in the fucking giant army of crushing... Doom giants that are going to destroy the world or whatever. So I guess they are bad in that sense. <laughs> you know, but besides that though, besides the fact that they're bringing forth a giant army of, of fucking doom robots that are going to that are going to destroy the world, besides that though, they're cool. Well, I played part of Mask of the Betrayer, and from what I played, it was really good. But, I played not that much of it. Maybe a third at most of the expansion. Probably less than that. I don't remember why exactly that I stopped playing it, but it's like a lot of games. I get distracted with something else in my life, or 
some other game that I want to play, and then I just end up never going back to a game that I was playing, even if I liked it a whole lot. Like, that's what happened with The Witcher 3. And then I always think I want to... Mind your center. You always knew this time would come. I've seen the other side, brother. I'll find its waters again, warm and soothing. Creepy fucking water cult. And then what happens is, I keep thinking, okay, I need to start playing that again. But then enough time passes that I feel like, oh shit, it's been too long, I've forgotten it. Now I want to start over from the beginning. But then I think, oh, but I just played through a bunch of it, I don't want to start over from the beginning. So then I just put it off, and I, w I have to wait long enough at that point that I can start it over from the beginning and, and it can be like new to me. Oh, this area is forbidden. I go where I please. No, I'll be... Okay, alright. I hear you. We're cool. Like, Divinity Original Sin is another one. I've put a fuck ton of hours into that, and I'm pretty far through the game. But I completely stopped playing it, like, months ago. And now, I don't want to go back to it because it's been so long since I played. And most likely, Let's I'll probably never go back to it, even though I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was amazing, but I thought it was pretty good. The Vault of Forgotten Thoughts. Alright, so they won't let me go into the Halls of Silence there. So what I'm going to do is come over here and go in that entrance to the Halls of Silence and see what happens. Might be the exact same thing, but we'll see. You can rarely stop playing a game midway through. Yeah, you're more obsessive than I am, though. I get distracted by other things very... Well, plus my mood is so fickle. Whether I'm in the mood to do certain things. Sometimes I get out of a gaming mood completely and I don't want to play any games. Or sometimes I only want to play a certain type of game. So even if I'm playing a type of a game that I really like, if it's not the type of game that I'm in the mood to play, then I won't play it. Sometimes I only want to play online games and, and be social with people online, which is not that often, but sometimes. And other times I absolutely do not want to play anything where I have to be social with other people. Sometimes I want to stream, like now. Other times I don't want to stream. And then I can't play any games that I was streaming. Or, well, the other thing that happens is, if I'm in a time where I don't want to stream, there's a shitload of games I won't play, because I'm saving those games to stream, right? So then I'm like, well, I don't want to stream now, but I don't want to play this game without streaming it. Therefore, I will not play this game. And so I have this whole list of games that I've been waiting to play forever. That I'm saving to stream. I've got it. Finished. I steal your rods and your torches. Let's go. Ah, oh, they're fucking with me with this forbidden shit again, huh? Too bad you didn't record it, you could have just watched your old playthrough like what you did with Book of Unwritten Tales. Yeah, that would work. I did that with Portal too. Right before I did my Portal 2 playthrough, I watched my whole playthrough of Portal. Just so it was everything was fresh in my mind. I could have just played through Portal again, but I thought it might be more amusing to watch me myself fail at the first Portal. And I actually really enjoyed watching my Portal playthrough. And I really enjoyed playing Portal 2. I'm doing that. that it's a really good game. Alright, so apparently we don't get to go to the fucking Halls of Silence at this point. Unless we want to go back outside and go the sneaky, sneaky way. But I think if we do that, we're going to end up getting into trouble and getting into a fight. Because we'll be in a forbidden area. And they'll be like, how the fuck did you get in here? And I'll be like, I'm the key master. And they'll be like, no, you're not. Shut up. And then it'll be bad. So, I think it just might be time to go do our recitation. Look, I've looked at the mural, I remember what was on the mural, I've read the book, I remember what was in the book. I think I got this. I think I got this. We're gonna quick save. And then we're gonna do this. 
Are you prepared now for the recitation? This is basically like a fucking oral exam. I'm essentially taking a test here. Alright, here we go. Let's do this. We can begin the recitation. Very good. We shall commence the rising. Yeah, yeah. Rising all around. Woo! Yay, conclave. First is Anthu. Last is Dianthu. For the tide comes at the end and leaves at the beginning. Right, I remember that from the mural. I am Disaman the Ebb. Who comes this way? Uh... I was never very good at tests. Attack! I am Saman the Flood. Blessed be Saman that washes over the shore and brings the end. Blessed be Disaman that returns to the sea and leaves behind the beginning. Saito says, good. again, it seems a bit odd that a test for Andra would involve remembering things, right? Listen, I'm a perfect Andrite. I've forgotten the answers because I'm so devoted to Andra. Ha! How you feel about that? A gift bearer comes to Disaman and asks him to bear his burdens away. What token do you offer, gift bearer? I give myself for a gift bearer has no other tokens to offer. That's what it said in the book. The token is received in Andra's name. Tell me of your burdens. Ooh, this is a tricky one, because number five looks solid. I have none for all that belongs to Andra is forgotten. That feels like you're kind of fucking like loopholing your way through it. But it, I think it kind of should be number two, is that's the burden that the person in the book said that they had. So it could be two or five. This one's tricky. I'm going to go with two. In Andra's embrace, our burdens are lifted. Oh, wait, I forgot to voice that. I bear the weight of the memories of others. Kauto looks at you and shakes his head. I'm afraid you have misremembered some of the right. This will not do. I must have gotten that last one wrong. Has it been so long since you were a gift bearer yourself, Tidebringer? You are encouraged to speak with others if it helps to refresh your memory. The recitation is archaic, but it is essential to the rising. If it cannot be completed, the rising will have to wait. No, we're going to complete it. Don't even trip. If you think you are ready. Don't get sassy with me, Kauto. First is Anth. I yeah, am I know. Disaman the e Blessed be I'm Saman. Still the fucking gift bearer Saman. comes to Dis. Still... The token, tell me of your burdens. So now we're going with number five. I have none, for all that belongs to Andra is forgotten. In Andra's embrace, our burdens are lifted. There we go. Got it. That last one was tricky, because it really could have been either of those two, depending on how you look at things. Kauto appears pleased. He nods. The Tidebringer shows herself worthy of her charge. Your purpose here, Tidebringer, is to perform the ceremony of the Rising. It is the transition of one phase of service to the next. Yeah, I perform Risings all the time. Whatever, I got this. Let's rise some shit. How much longer is this going to be? My joints are rusting. Devil of Karak. Good thing you're freshly greased, am I right? On the level beneath us in the Halls of Silence, our low-tide brothers and sisters have lived for many years, sealed by their own will. Low-tide? That sounds like an amazing Andrite insult. Our fucking low-tide brothers. Those low-tried motherfuckers down below. Sounds like such a dismissive thing to call somebody. Ah, uh, it's okay. They're just low tides. It is time for them to be relieved of service, and for the high tide brothers and sisters here to take their place. Okay, sure. You would laugh if you had a chance to just be like stoically silent the entire time and it would also get you through the test. That would be funny. 
in the halls below, you will find a relic, Andra's Witness, and a Spergillum, whatever the fuck that is, for dispensing holy water, but also something more. The device will flood the halls of silence. This is the rising. Oh, I'm about to drown a bunch of people. In the name of some crazy guy. Okay, this cult is, is crazier than I, was, I thought. Alright. Uh, what do I do when what do I do when the rising is complete? The high tide is to replace the low and stand vigil in the halls of silence until the next rising. All right, being a member of this cult officially sucks because you know you start off you're like, "Hey, I'm high tide. This cult's great." Then you have to become low tide and you have to fucking go down there and just hang out underground imprisoned waiting to be drowned to death yeah this this cult is not so bad not so great i wonder if they get told that when they join <laughs> or if they just spring it on them like hey by the way <laughs> when you have completed the rising bring andra's witness to me here i will show you the last of what you need to know once I have Andra's witness, what do I do with it? The device it operates is a simple valve mechanism. It will be clear to you when you see it. I'll return once the rising is complete. So, here's the deal. If I was still playing Serafina, my original character, there's no way she would go through with this. And she would definitely ask, won't the people down there drown? But since I'm playing Katie, who's a very different kind of character, she's, she's honorable in her way, but she's not really immoral in, in the, you know, caring about human life sort of way. So, she really gives no fucks about this. To reach your destination, you will need to know the sign of the tide, which is kept only by the High Abbot. It's said that it is the first knowledge lost when the Abbot joins the low tide in the Halls of Silence. I already know the sign. I read your journal, bro. But why don't you tell me? Watch carefully. Kauto contorts the fingers of his right hand into a particular curl shape. Then with his left hand, he traces an arc from center to end. Simultaneously with his index and little fingers. Right, right hand is a wave, left hand is the moon. I trust you will perform your duty, Tidebringer. Oh, I'll perform it all day long. So she's lawful neutral? No. Not really. She's not really lawful at all. It's not like she has a code that she follows. It's more of just kind of like that, that rough barbarian honor sort of thing. I'd say she's more like chaotic neutral. With good tendencies, but not really good, per se. Saito says, I also note that the people at Obsidian have a thing about flooding underground areas and drowning people. Eyes open. Well, yeah. I mean, drowning people is just good times. Is it done, then? And do you have the witness? I want to know more about the Rising. It is my duty to ensure you understand it fully. I've heard enough! Attack! No, I'm not going to attack. This place is full of... I'll get my ass kicked in here. I trust you will perform your duty, Tidebringer. I mean, just in this fucking room alone, we've got a monk, a cipher, a priest, I think, a, a chanter, this dude who's probably also a monk, another priest, another monk, another monk, I think this is a paladin. This would be badness if I had to suddenly fight all those guys. Not to mention the fucking 150 other motherfuckers around this whole place. Baldur's Gate and New Vegas both had things about drowning people in underground caverns. I don't remember anything in, Bal Bal in Baldur's Gate about that either. 
Of course, like I said earlier, my memory of Baldur's Gate is very poor. Alright, so what's it say here? Well, apparently the quest didn't update, but I need to go down, down below and uh, drown some people, I suppose. So let's get on that. Cloakwood mines. I do remember the cloakwood mines. I don't remember people being drowned in them, though. I should really play Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Editions as well. Dragon Age Inquisition also had a subplot about that same thing. Maybe it's everyone who was involved with Black Isle. I don't know. There's a lot of drowning going on, though, apparently. So, hey folks, don't worry about me. I'm going to come into your forbidden area. I'm only here to drown you, so don't even trip. And to take your turquoise. This area is forbidden. Kauto granted me leave to walk freely. So it begins. You may continue, Tidebringer. Be warned, the low tide have been in the Halls of Silence for a long time. Their minds are not sound. Your presence may provoke them. Ah, so now I am going to have to fight some of these guys. Hopefully I just won't have to fight all of these guys. Hello? Hello? To this. The massive coppery bones encased under the ice seem to be part of the hips of a giant skeleton. Oh yeah, we saw the other bones of the giant skeleton up above. Is this going to take me to the other entrance over here? Ooh, hidden Found stuff. Found something! Now, see, which entrance is this? Ramparts of the Abbey. This must be, this must lead out to the, I've got to know, hold on, I've got to know where this goes to. To the place we got to by swinging across the gap with the grappling hook? Is that what this, is that what this door leads to? Because if so, this all makes sense. If not, it leads to a new area, in which case I'm intrigued. I don't remember that at all, Saito. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong, obviously, but I don't remember it. Wait, we just came out here. Okay, so this is a door to the Halls of Silence. Oh, and the other one into the Halls of Silence was over here. Okay. Let's go back in. Loading screens of eternity. I laughed so hard when I watched that tyranny stream, and I saw the loading screen for tyranny, and it was hella long, and I was just like, "Yep, <laughs> this is this is clearly based on the tech of Pillars of Eternity." Fucking Pillars of Eternity is loading screens of eternity. Tyranny is tyranny of loading screens. Either way, they're going to get you with some loading screens. Have to play Enhanced Edition it is really quite good.
Plus 15 max endurance. That's not bad. Let's see if anybody wants to wear that. A thin layer of frost sparkles over this store of bread and cabbages. Let's see. Max endurance. Uh, yeah, he's not going to wear that. She's not going to wear that. Out of curiosity, this plus three constitution, I wonder how much endurance that's actually giving me. Endurance right now is 328. Oh, see it goes down considerably, switching to the plus 15 endurance one. So that goes right into the stash. Open grappling hook, nice. More Boots of Speed! That's the fourth pair of Boots of Speed I've found. They really want me to have some fucking Boots of Speed up in here. Make sure they receive extra. I'll not let them fall into the Goddess's embrace with empty stomachs. Their supplies are bountiful, sister. I have seen to it. Bountiful supplies for the crazy monks that you're about to drown. Nice. Alright, so this is the other entryway that we tried to come down earlier. Steal your stew. Wave Crested Key. This key, its handle resembling the crest of a wave, was cut from a deep blue crystal. That seems important. Alright. This must be how I go into the place proper where all the crazy monks are. And that's what I need the key for. Okay. One thing you wish you'd have gotten rid of from the original was the annoying character roll system, though. No, you can't get rid of that. Weren't you allowed to just change your stats to whatever the hell you wanted? In... Never played a game before that where you had to keep tapping a button for an hour until I got a neighbor that made you happy. Well, you didn't need to tap a thing that many times. You could have just accepted. I mean, I don't know what numbers you were going for, but... Uh, you know, when you played actual D&D back in the day, you just had to roll your stats. And you rolled them once and you had to stick with whatever the hell you got. In, in tabletop D and D, of course they they went they did away with, or at least they made it optional. Most of the the more recent versions of D and D have had a point by type system where you build your stats the way you want instead of using rolling, which I think is much better. I don't like rolling for stats either, but you know if that's what you got to do, then. Tide monks, are they going to attack me? Discovered the pool of the anointed. Doesn't look like much of a pool, really. I don't think they understand what pool means. It usually involves water being in a thing. An acrid and pungent smell climbs up from the depths of this pit. Oh, maybe it's got acid down there, and they drop stuff in there to forget about it into the acid or whatever. Well, no, not like, not in Baldur's Gate. You could re-roll as many times as you wanted. I mean, in like, tabletop D&D back then. Should I just leave them alone? 
I kind of want to talk to him and see what happens. Hey. Quick save. I don't think that word means what you think it means. That word quick you're using. Do I know you? The noise! No! No! No more! This woman drags her fingers on the wall, cringing whenever her cracked nails scratch the stone. Alright, so these people have been in here a little too long. Clumps of moss frozen under a layer of slick and green slime build up between the cut stones. The man stares at the ground, his sunken eyes devoid of spark. Goddess, what stirs? Okay, that's ridiculous. Sido, expecting to have four 18s is madness. I mean, going into it as a D&D &D player, I had an idea of what is a reasonable set of stats to go for. If you have one 18, and like a couple 16s, and a 14, and a 12, then you've got good stats right there. Those, I mean, that's, that's good. Wanting more than one 18, especially four of them, is fucking madness. No one has ever rolled stats that good. <laughs> All right, what are we doing here? We're gonna, we're gonna. All right, the noise, yeah, yeah, the noise, okay. Aimlessly, this dwarf jerks his head to the sides as if looking for someone. I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop, and all of these. You got a 98. That's that's insane. That is an insane amount of stats for D and D. The door is sealed shut. The hell's happening in here? Some dead person in there. That's their soul. Talk to some souls, I guess. Man, the quick save takes forever. It's like the loading screens. I don't know why I keep going this way. I'm going to talk to that soul. I'm going to loot this skeleton. Nice. I have like several of those rings already. Some people go for the full 108. Some people are insane. Like, instead of doing that, just get one of those, like, trainer programs that I'm sure you can download for free from the internet in about five minutes that'll just let you hack your stats to all to whatever you want. Like, I would, I would do that before I would spend more than about five minutes re-rolling. And, of course, I would never try to roll that high anyway. I'd re-roll until I could have about a, about an 18 in my main stat, a 16 in my second stat, and anywhere from 12 to 16 in the rest of them, and call it a day. One of the new companions, Dorn, has a total stat number of 91. That's pretty fucking good. I mean, 90 isn't bad. That's an average of 15 in each, which is which is really good. Realize that if you're actually just rolling them, statistically your average is ten and a half each. So your statistical average just rolling the dice for each stat, if you were actually just rolling them on 3d6, is what? Ten and a half times six. 63? 63 is the average roll. So when you're talking about 90 or 90-something, 90 
That's insanely high compared to the average of 63. All right, let's uh, talk to this soul and see what happens. Hovering over a skeleton half trapped in ice, a faint r trace of essence lingers in the cold air of the cavern. You let your soul envelop the essence. Memories spread in a thin mist under you, dim and torn, their scattered fragments floating like motes of dust in the twilight. Dust moat memories. You're walking into an oblong chamber. The stones of its underground walls glisten, still wet from the floodwaters. A hand clasps on your shoulder. You hear her whisper, Arthrek, I don't want to look. The memory vanishes, and now all you see is a slab of stone. You're staring at it, just inches away from the wall. Your fingers trace circles on it, digging into the moss that clings on its weathered surface. You're not sure how long you've been touching it. Perhaps you've always been. A scream jolts you. Its echoes thunder throughout the halls. Your ears hurt, a pain that digs deep, burrowing into your head like a twisted dagger. You run. Others run. You don't know them. You can't remember them. But somehow you take comfort in their presence. Yes, they will help you with the pain. The noise, you'll kill it. This is kind of weird and creepy. I don't know what's going on here. The anger of the memory subsides, and now you're sitting down on steps carved on rock. Dozens of skeletons lie below, beneath frozen water. Their jaws hang open, silent. Yet, what's that? A low rumble. Gargling, growling, deafening. You snap your head to the side in anguish and see it. The water rushing down the halls, pushing you in a torrent of white foam. You fall, your mouth opens to shout, but your screams are muffled as it fills with water. So we just enjoyed the memories of a person who got drowned to death. Good times. Oh, what's this now? And he had loot. Arthex cord. Game Engine uses an alternative algorithm for calculating points. Most rolls are between 68 and 92, with 76 being the most common. It might be using something similar to 46 drop the low, which is what is used a lot. That's one of the alternate dice rolling methods, and I think it even became the standard in like 3rd edition. Which gives you much better scores overall. You'd roll 4 dice, you'd drop the lowest one and keep the highest 3. Which would statistically, I don't know how to figure out what that average is for that, but it's much better. Uh, Arthex Cord. Plus to move speed while endurance is above 75%, plus to interrupt while it's below. Ketzpak was a famous raider from the Ixamital Plains, and Arthrek was his prized stallion. Renowned for his speed and skill on horseback, Ketzpak could disarm an opponent in the time it took most to knock an arrow. He disdained heavy and elaborate armor, claiming that a true warrior could fight in anything. To prove his point, he fashioned his belt from Arthrex reins. Oh, that's pretty cool. But, no. Every time you make an arrow and typing here, a little bit of you dies inside. Man. You are... Very obsessed with lots of things. Good thing I'm freshly greased. Everybody makes typos. Everybody. Compared to most of the people on the internet, your typing and spelling are, are exceptional, so... Now this must lead out to that other... This is where you would come in if you snuck in from outside. Cliffs of the Abbey, yeah. Oh, we got enemies. Man, I ain't seen enemies in a while. Moon spiderlings. What else? Dorn, you see, he's a badass. 19 strength and immunity. Now, he's a new companion, right? Because there was no Dorn in the original. 
Baldur's Gate. The companions kind of sucked in the original Baldur's Gate, actually. They weren't that good, and their characterization was generally pretty lame. I mean, the most memorable one was Minsk, of course. Minsk and Boo. Everybody remembers him, but a lot of the other ones were pretty forgettable. Well, for me, anyway. I know that a lot of people have their fan favorites. And the companions seem to be a lot more fleshed out in Baldur's Gate 2. Giant Moon Spider. We haven't faced one of those before. Well, hey. I think this calls for some Adair. I think this calls I'm for ready. some Adair. I understand. Following your lead. Hey. Shall we do of course. this? They all just shooting some bullshit at him. See the way I did that? You see the way I did that? I bet a dare could solo these fucking spiders. But I bet it would take him a while. It would take him longer than I care to spend. That one serves. Why is he getting nuked? And still. I have them. All right, well that was pretty easy. Problem you have with Dorn is he's pretty evil. Yeah, I never really like evil companions in games, usually. They have to be pretty fucking complex and nuanced for me to like them. Because usually, evil companions are just, like, so one-sided. I'm just evil because I'm evil, and being evil is what it's all about. Let's just do evil shit every time there's a chance to do something evil. Let's do something evil. Why are you doing something good? I'm mad at you now because you did something good. You know who pisses me off? Morrigan from Dragon Age Origins. Even though I did choose to romance him mm -hmm. on my first playthrough. Shh. Every time you try to do something good, Morrigan disapproves. Morrigan disapproves. Like, just calm your shit, Morrigan. Viconia, yeah, Viconia is a really cool character. And she's evil. Exceptional wand and a potion of power. A little bit of a bunch of junk here. This is their trash area. Despite the icy sheen that covers these webs, the threads gently vibrate at the slightest disturbance. So... For some reason, there just happened to be some, some spiders here. Um, which is unusual. Okay, good. You liked about Dragon Age 2 once you max out your rivalry friendship with the companion that became locked at that? That's pretty cool. Door is sealed shut. I feel like if I fuck with this, all of a sudden every one of these monks in these little rooms is going to go hostile and come after me and it's going to be ridiculous and it's going to make me sad in my pants and my brain and my heart and my legs and my feet. And my arms and everywhere else that can be sad. 
Yes? I feel like I should, like, prepare for this by moving people. Your will. To more I'll sane try. areas. Hey. All right, then. Uh-huh. Hey. Adair will handle this by himself. But... That is going to do it for this episode. So, we will muss around with this device on the wall next time and finish exploring the Halls of Silence. Complete this ritual, hopefully drown a bunch of people and uh, get our thing that we need and go into the reliquary and get it done. I'm sure everything will work out fine and there will be no problems. But that's all going to be next time. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.